Stoffel van Dorn, one of the most respected Formula E drivers, 2015 GP2 world champion, and he's just come off the back of two full seasons with McLaren Formula One team. However, life in Formula E so far, well, it's, it's not been great for him. And if you've been following Formula E this year, you will know it's been, well, worse than that, really. I'm putting it nicely. It's been a pretty shocking start to the season, especially his race results. However, diving in a little bit deeper, the talent is there and it is showing. And looking at the title of this video, is he going to be champion? Well, this year, no. And I think that's what I really wanted to talk about today, is that Van Dorn needs time. You know, a lot of people think with Formula E, oh, it's just this B-Tech series that ex-Formula 1 drivers, aging Formula 1 drivers are pushed off to, and drivers like Van Dorn, that arguably should be heading towards their peak, are going to really dominate the series. However, the talent in Formula E is going up and up and up every single year, so much so that this year is the best grid we've ever seen in Formula E, and I'm 100% sure of that, because even just thinking about drivers maybe being switched out mid-season, it's so hard to pick someone that doesn't really deserve to be there. But Van Dorn is definitely a driver that I consider to be one of the best on the grid, so why is it that he's not scored a single point all year? So, first things first then, why isn't he not going to win this year? Well, it's pretty straightforward. If you've not followed Formula E, please bear with me, you should be able to follow this, but Van Dorn drives for the team HWA Race Lab, which are a brand new team to Formula E this year, and technically, they're the only brand, brand new team. We also had Nissan come into the sport, but they were just an evolution of a former team, but HWA, everything is brand new, brand spanking new, new team members, new drivers, both of them rookies, which I still feel was a real big gamble and feel they should have tried to lure a driver that has a little bit more experience in the series. However, that's the decision they made and they were very willing to just give it a complete fresh start, give it a season just to completely attack and just try your best. And that's the mentality the team have. They don't have a race winning mentality. They don't even have a points finish or even a race finishing mentality at the moment because it's so difficult and they're in this learning phase. So a lot of people that are saying, oh, Van Dorn, you know, he was awful at McLaren. He's just as awful now. That That's an unfair judgment because this is a completely different situation. McLaren trying everything they can to get back to the front. Should have stuck with the Honda engines. In hindsight, I believe, but that's definitely a topic for another day. Whereas HWA are a team that don't have this historic prowess. They're a brand new team. And like I say, with two rookies, with the whole technical team almost being rookies to the sport, it's going to be a completely different experience. And so let's go through his results then, because can it really be that bad? Well, like I said, he's not got a single point in each of the races, and we've only had three races so far, so maybe it's a little too early to really judge Van Dorn's season this year. But there has been, amongst the chaos, some crazy results in there, and some real signs of some true pace. Let's go back to the first race of the season in Saudi Arabia. Van Dorn's first outing in a Formula E car. No real experience. Yes, he had testing, but no race experience. And at Saudi Arabia, the first race, we had a really crazy qualifying. And it was wet, and they changed up the qualifying system. And Van Dorn was able to get fourth on the grid, which was, I'm not going to lie, an incredible result. And I think at the time, because it was the first race of the year, millions, it almost feels like, of new fans watching Formula E, people just were like, oh, well, he, you know, he's an ex-Formula 1 driver. That makes sense that he's fourth. But I think people who had followed Formula E for the last few years would have thought, Hang on a second, this is definitely because of the changing conditions and the qualifying, because there's, there's no way a team like HWA is going to jump in and smash it. That being said, BMW, who a lot of people are saying BMW are new to the sport, but they're not, they've just fully come on as a works team, they got pole position in that race, so it's, it's a little bit different. In the race, that car really did show its pace, and again, people said, oh, Van Dorn, he's just not got the, got the skill. But it, I really do think it was the car, because even Van Dorn's teammate, Gary Paffert, also went backwards. So, it, it's, look, it's hard to judge that first race. So let's move on to the second race. Well, that was even worse. 
for Stoffel Van Dorn. He ended 16th the first race. He did actually make it to the end, but it was a, a chaotic race. Yeah, went backwards and backwards and backwards. It was, it was gutting to see, to be totally honest. So next race, what happened there? Well, qualifying. First real chance to see where is the pace of the car. The car broke down. Um, not really much else to say. It broke down. He was on a good lap, but we'll never know. Formula E qualifying is such a peculiar system, and you can't really tell too much. Yes, you can spot consistency, so we can see this season already that it seems like the Tachita and BMWs are the quickest, but even they aren't just smashing it in pole position every single time. So it's difficult to judge, but obviously... Breaking down is definitely not ideal. So what happened in the race? Well, the race was even worse because lap one, Van Dorn... Well, I, I can't really blame it on Van Dorn. He piled into the side of his teammate, Gary Paffert. Both of them DNF'd on the first lap. However, there was so much carnage on that first lap. I, I will give him a little bit of the benefit of the doubt. It was a little bit clumsy and he should have been a little bit more cautious. But on that particular opening lap, there was so much chaos going on. I, I can't really blame him too much. However, you've got to put the blame there a little bit. So, Marrakesh, second race of the season, you've got to, you can't really judge that either. So, you can already see why I'm saying you need to give him time. So, last time out then, the third round and the most recent round of the championship, what happened? Well, our first, again, I'm going to have to say proper real chance to look at qualifying was skewed again because track evolution was so high in Santiago, Chile that we saw some crazy results in qualifying that saw Van Dorn get into Super Bowl, which in Formula 1 terms is Q3, but it, it is different. So if you're watching this as a Formula 1 fan, he got into the top qualifying session, all right? That's what it boils down to. He was last in that top qualifying session, but ended up fifth after grid penalties further up from the likes of of Lucas Degrassi. So fifth on the grid, that's very respectable. Again, track evolution helped him out so, so much, but still getting fifth, impressive. But were we going to see another performance where he's just going to drop back straight away? Well, no, we didn't. And actually, he held on for the majority of the race, Van Dorn. And if he didn't eventually crash into the wall, I think he could have been in a real chance for a podium because drivers ahead did have penalties. And Daniel Apt, who he was just behind, ended up on the podium. So, I'm sure he's gutted for that. But even just the fact that the way he did eventually crash was defending from another driver behind. He got onto the marbles and just lost it into the wall. And so many drivers did that across this weekend. We saw Ollie Rowland, another rookie, do it. Sebastian Buemi, world champion of Formula E, also do it. So... He'll be gutted from that because this was a real chance to prove that, yeah, I'm here in Formula E, I'm going to smash it. However, although a lot of media critics have said, oh, Van Dorn again lets himself down, I don't think he did. And I think he really did prove that out of all of these drivers on the grid, he has got some talent and he deserves to be there. Because fighting up at the front like he did in this race was an incredible job in a car which is the worst car on the grid. And it's the only car now that's not got a single point. So there is time for Van Dorn. And you look at people like jean Eric Verne, who people say, oh, he's the best Formula E driver. Well, in the third ever race of the championship is when Verne came in, got pole position on the first race, didn't win till season three. Last race of season three. Season four, he became champion. So look, Formula E is such a different kettle of fish from Formula 1 and I feel people don't respect that because it's not just a Formula 1 car with an electric battery there's different elements there's no tyre saving there's well I suppose there is an element of fuel saving because it's power saving but even how you do that is so different because the car regenerates power through the corners and that's obviously just a really basic description of how it's different but it is so so different and learning the cars does take time like jean Eric Verne has proved. And with HWA evolving into Mercedes next year, that's going to be the big one. Because that means Mercedes are fully coming on as a manufacturer. We've seen what they've done in Formula 1. And I'm not saying Mercedes are going to jump in and smash it straight away. But you look at the likes of Tachita, who were a customer team last year, won the Drivers' World Championship, almost won the Constructors' Championship. 
you look at the likes of Mahindra. You know, not an incredibly well-known car manufacturer outside of India. However, they've proved that an almost underdog-like story, they can still perform. Virgin Racing, that every single year, they're a customer team this year. And yet, they have been on the podium twice. Sam Bird is leading the Drivers' Championship. And they're a customer team. Nissan, they're in their first year. They could have won last time out. But Wemi could have been leading the championship if things had gone the right way. So you've got to give them time. And I'm sure when Mercedes come on next year, they will evolve and they will get better. But Van Dorn, he, he just needs time. And I'm sure he will be champion because he's in the right place. And yes, he's almost sacrificed this year. But it's a learning year. So really, if anything... It's the perfect situation because the limelight isn't going to be on him as much. Of course there is going to be limelight because he's an XF1 driver. But it's not going to be as much because we know he's fighting at the back. And you look at incidents like Antonio Felix da Costa in a race winning car. Crash in the second race of the season. Look how much pressure is now on him. Van Dorn crashes. Well, we, just put, we can easily just put it down to the car. And the fact that he's a rookie. So there's not as much pressure. And I think, yes, give him a few seasons, I expect Van Dorn to be champion. I'd love to know what you think, because, <laughs> blimey, this is a controversial one. Thanks, guys, for watching. Loads of videos will be coming out in the next few days. We've got the Hass launch later on today, so I'm hoping to get that out as quickly as possible. Looking nice, is all I can say, just looking at the few images that have come out so far. So hopefully you guys will enjoy that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.